everybody, it's Miss Erin from the Cedar Rapids Museum of Art, back to bring you another pajama story time from our new exhibition, 125, 125 masterworks from the collection. Now, the master that I picked for today's inspiration is a guy named Vasily Kandinsky, and he's pretty well known for painting lots of brightly colored circles, among other things, he had something called synesthesia. It's hard to explain what this is exactly, but basically imagine your senses, your sense of taste or smell or hearing or vision or touch, they're all kind of tangled up inside your brain. So if you hear a piece of music, for example, like Kandinsky would have, you can close your eyes and see pictures from the music. The music makes colors and shapes appear in your mind's eye. Sometimes if you have synesthesia, you might hear a word and be able to taste it or feel it in your fingers. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about. And Kandinsky turned his synesthesia into artwork so that he could share it with the world. And this piece behind me is one of his wood blocks. Um, it's basically like making a stamp out of a piece of wood and then stamping it with ink or paint. And what he loved to do was take big, complex images, pictures, and simplify them. So he only used three colors in this piece. He only used big kind of blobby shapes in this piece but it still tells a story. And I love that about Kandinsky. He could tell many stories with just a few colors or just a few shapes. This one is called Orientalish. It's based on a word that means in the Oriental style. And Oriental is a word that we don't really use anymore. It's outdated, but you can imagine looking at it up close, what was he thinking about? What did he see in his mind or hear? What did he taste or feel in his hands when he was seeing this picture in his mind? So, for today's story, I thought I would read you a story about Kandinsky that talks a little bit about his synesthesia, but also, if you were with us last time for our book on Mary Grand Prix's chess game, um, this book that I'm gonna read you, even though it's about Kandinsky, was actually illustrated by this artist, Mary Grand Pre, which I think is cool because our curator put them next to each other in the galleries. So when you come and visit us, with your mask on, of course, you can see them right next to each other. So today's story is The Noisy Paint Box. This book is written by Barb Rosenstock, and as I said, is illustrated by Mary Grand Pre. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown-ups talked and talked and talked. Vazia's well-off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said Auntie. She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. I bet if you have paints at school, your paint box is not made out of wood. I bet it's plastic, but it works kind of the same way. Vasya mixed red with yellow, then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vasya heard a whisper. Louder, hiss, then louder still, hiss. Have you ever mixed colors? 
colors together and heard anything? Hmm, it's very interesting. What's that sound? asked Vasya. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Vasya listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Vasya. What a noisy paint box. Silly Vasya, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. But do you see how it looks like there's music coming out of his paint box? Swirling colors is turning into music. But his parents apparently don't hear it. Vasya painted the sounds of the colors. He spun bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up a jagged swash of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of burbling green, clanging orange, and tinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went quiet. That does sound very, very noisy, doesn't it? <clears throat> Look what I made, shouted Vasya. Is it a house? asked Auntie. Is it a flower? asked Mama. What's it supposed to be? asked Papa. It's music, said Vasya, waltzing his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heavens, said Auntie, this boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers, just like everyone else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary-colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset haze ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory chorus of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. Have you ever heard snowflakes make a sound? One evening, suitably steamed and starched, Vasya attended the opera. As the orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind. Stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles in pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Vasya heard the colors singing. Vasya saw the music dancing. And Vasya was never quite as proper again. He quit his job teaching law and moved from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher and then that one. Is it house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? His teachers asked. Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard, but maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vasya put houses and flowers, animals and people into his paintings, just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy. Vasya was not. His artist friends understood. 
They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasya told them, like music. Exactly, his friends said, but none of them knew how to paint feelings. Until the day Vasya grew brave enough and invited the world to see the paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Ooh, hiss, rattle, bash, fizz, whistle, murmur, zip, clang. Snapping cerulean points, crunching cinnamon squares, whispering charcoal lines, Vasya named these paintings after the music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fugue, movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy paint box, Vasya Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? It's my art, Vasya answered. How does it make you feel? In the back of this book, if you get your own, if you get a chance to look at it on your own, they have some of Vasya's pieces, as you would see them in real life, and they are spectacular. But it's kind of fun to find the music that they go with and listen to it as you look at the pieces he painted and see if you can figure out how he was seeing what he was hearing. If you joined us for Family Fun Day last month in November, um, we did a, an abstract art making project. So if you want to try that on your own, please watch those videos and try some abstract art for yourself. It's actually really fun. And then you can share the pictures or videos of your artwork with us at the museum. Thanks everyone. See you next time.